North American experience has all, you know, for the past you know, years, as long as I remember, has always been the premium place to work. You have the most Fortune 500 companies, I think. You have the most like, headquarters of companies. There's a lot of innovation, this and that. So the value of the experience you get in North America is always a premium to all the other ones. Within North America, US has the most opportunity, in my opinion. Uh, you can take any industry, from entrepreneurship to uh, tech technology to banking to consulting. But I think, so one advice I would say to people is that always first start in a premium location. Because it's much easier to go from a premium place to another place. Because your brand remains. If I work in the US and I go back to Canada, I would always have that premium work experience from the US. If I start in the US and I go to India, I move to Delhi or something, I would always have that US experience. And that is valued in today's world. But I think people should also understand that the world has changed as well. Now, a school teacher from China can launch a global e-commerce company equally as successfully as uh, a dropout from Harvard who started a social network. So there are things happening in other parts of the world. Now, which is why I think people should get international experience. Now, when you say, OK, get international experience, where should you, you can go in a lot of places. There's a couple of reasons why I think you should look into Asia. Now, everybody's like, China is growing, India is growing, yes. But if you look deeper down, a couple of layers down, you'll see why it's growing. Why does it work? If you ever visit a Chinese company or an Indian company, you'll notice a few very big differences compared to companies here in North America. The first thing is there's about 2.5 billion people that are in that region alone, China, India, the you know, surrounding geographies. That's like almost half the world. So there are people. And by definition, all businesses are consumer businesses. Either a business, an enterprise business, and then that enterprise helps consumers, or it's a direct consumer business. So if there are a lot of consumers, then there are a lot of businesses. So that's number one. Number two, I think in the US, there's 60,000 engineering graduates every year. In China, there's a stat that I read, there's 600,000 every year, 10 times. Smart engineers, right? Number three. Hardworking. If you ever see these offices, a cubicle in Taiwan or China or Hong Kong is one fourth the size almost of a cubicle here in North America. And people work even longer hours right, and don't complain. And on top of that, they get paid a fraction of what you get paid here in North America for the same job. So when you have all of these factors in Asia, then that means there's going to be a lot of high growth. A lot of high growth before a lot of these factors stabilize with the Western world. So that, to me, excites me. Right? And I think there's a lot of value in being in that region, learning those things, and applying the skills that you've learned here and there. Because it's still early innings. People said you know, China was, at the time to move to China was 2000. I think still there's a time to move to China now. There's definitely a time to move to India now. Right? There's six amazing geographies right next to India, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, all those. So move now, get some international experience, maybe two years, maybe four years. Now you have the best of everything. You've worked in a fully developed ecosystem. You've worked in a growing ecosystem. After this, you get to make any choice you want. You can stay there if you want. You can come back if you want. You can start your own thing if you want. And I think that makes a, uh, a full, you know, well-rounded individual who I think you know, can, can really be successful in life.